Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to sketch and paint a little shop front or restaurant in London, which is called Minnow. And it's a very beautiful place. I love that they have different flowers for different seasons. And I will basically be using this picture right here from Pinterest as a reference. And I'll also be using the Google Street View. I will link that in the description below. But uh, I will, I'll be using this Street View as well as the picture before as a reference. I like the brick walls and the details on this building. So I will be including the two windows at the top of this shop because I think it will look really nice. First, I'll be doing a rough sketch with pencil and I'm using a Derwent B pencil. You can use HB or 2B depending on how dark you want your lines to be. Um, I think B is a nice shade for me because it is not too dark or too light. I think it's better to draw lightly when you're doing these rough sketches and don't try to get all the lines perfect. Just draw these very simple shapes and remember to get that shot front centered on the page. If it's um, skewed to one side, try to correct that right now, like during the stage when you can correct things so that you don't regret it in the future. Like I have done a few um, drawings where I failed to correct things in the sketch stage, in the pencil sketch stage. And I always regret it when I, when I start painting. Like you can't change the dimensions and um, how centered it is on the page and how big something is in, in contrast to other things. So try to just get it as, um, as accurate as you can get it. But at the same time, you don't have to fuss over it too much. Just um, get the proportions almost right. So when I say almost right, um, that is because I myself don't get things perfectly right because I'm only using the photo as a reference and I'm not trying to recreate it uh, like, a, like a computer can. I'm trying to just capture the essence and just some things to keep in mind is things like the door should be at least this height um, don't don't let people look at your drawing and think, well, that door is way too short or too small. How can a human walk through it? And that sort of sort of subtracts from your drawing. So try to get those things right. Like um, you don't have to fuss over it too much, but you do have to get some of these proportions correct. So today I'll be using this Twisby Eco Pen with a brown noodler's ink. You can see the ink right through, well, right inside that pen and it's really, really cool. Um, I'm also using a broad nib for this pen and you don't necessarily have to follow what I'm using, especially in terms of pen. Um, I'm using this brown pen mainly because uh, I wanted to try something new and you can always use black pens as long as they are waterproof then you will have no problems when you paint with watercolor later. Um, I always use black ink and today I decided I wanted to try brown ink and I think it does change your art a little bit when you change one thing and I think um, when you want to 
when when I want to come out of my comfort zone, like when I want to change up to change things up a bit, I will always like change one thing, and then continue to do what I always do, and see if the result is something that I like. Maybe it is better. Maybe it is just different. So if you are thinking about just breaking out of your comfort zone,、um, I think one of the best ways is to just change one thing. Maybe you don't draw, you don't draw at all,、um, and you want to draw. Then just change one thing in your life. Just buy one sketchbook. And let that sketchbook be your first step towards drawing,、uh, or maybe you can change it and use a different pen. Maybe that will change your art for the better. Maybe it will teach you something. So, yeah, if you want to come out of your comfort zone and try something new,、uh, I do recommend that you just take one step. The first step is definitely the hardest, but it is rewarding. Just taking that first step, although it does take a lot of courage. Yeah. So if you have been watching my tutorials,、um, you know that I like to draw in broken lines, and I purposely make some of these lines crooked. I don't like to have it super straight, and when I draw, I tend to layer on a few lines. Sometimes it makes the lines look darker. Sometimes it makes it look lighter, like in certain areas.、Um, I, if you don't draw one part of a line, that yeah, something like that, like what I just did, it feels like、um, there is light. Going through that area and it looks more natural, and I just like how crooked lines look. It just makes it super imperfect and perfect at the same time. So, things that you should、um, keep in mind when you're inking is to always、um, refer back to your picture and. I, I I guess most people would do that naturally, but some people would、um, maybe draw from their own imagination. And if you are learning and you're a beginner, it's very important to refer back to the reference and keep in mind to make these proportions correct.、Um, the only thing that I ch really change up is. Here the plants and the flowers. So I really go crazy with plants. I do these random sort of lines, and I love how that makes it look.、Um, you can do very more controlled lines. That's up to you.、Um, just get the shape in the correct、um, size and in the correct position, and you'll be good. So, the rest will be done by the paint. You can put in the flowers with the paint.、Um, you don't necessarily have to draw it out. So, yeah, that's that's what I love about ink and watercolor. They complement each other so much, and it's a really fun medium. Yeah. So if you are short on time and you're not keen on drawing the, all this out by yourself, you can also download the coloring page for this from my Ko-Fi page, and you can find a link for that in the description below. And you can use my ink outlines as a reference, or you can trace over it onto a piece of watercolor paper, and then you can paint together with me. And I think some people maybe they're not、um, keen on drawing and more keen on painting. Then that would be a great option for you. Or maybe you can just use it as a reference to sort of adjust your own sketches.
Here I'm actually using 100% cotton watercolor paper um, and it's by Bao Hong and I will link all the materials that I will be using in this video in the description below so you can check out all the details and you can purchase it if you like. Um, I get a lot of questions about what I'm using, what materials, and most of the time they will be in the description below, so do remember to check that out. Another thing that you'll see me using is the kneadable art eraser from Faber Castell, and I like using this kneadable eraser because it doesn't damage the paper like it would if you used um, a harder normal erasers and it doesn't leave a residue like normal erasers plus it lasts for a very very long time. I think I've been using this eraser um, for maybe two or three years and it's very handy. You can also lighten your pencil sketches and yeah it's a very handy little thing. So we're done with the inking and now let's proceed to the painting. And I am currently wetting the surface of this paper with clean water. This is done in preparation for a wet on wet technique, which is very good for creating soft edges. And that is one of the most unique and characteristic traits of watercolor paintings. As you can see, now I'm painting on the wet surface with a mixture of burnt sienna and yellow ochre. You don't have to worry about leaving some of these areas unpainted because the paint will spread a little bit into those areas and leaving a little bit of um, these patches unpainted is actually really nice because it looks more natural. Now I'm adding a little more paint and I used a cloth to absorb the excess water so that I can paint in these darker brown areas. So you do have to work quite fast so that the paint and the water does not dry up on the paper. So you can um, paint, continue to paint in this wet on wet technique. Having said that, um, when I painted this, it was really, really hot outside and I had the fan turned on and well, that caused this painting, this um, paper to dry on one side. So you can see the left and the right sides are different. The left sides, we have the soft edges and on the right side, we, ha we have the hard edges. So um, these were supposed to be the flowers and I was supposed to make them all um, soft. Um, but it's okay when these things, these things do happen when you paint and um, especially when you can't control the weather. So especially when you paint like outside, if you paint plein air, this will very likely happen. If you're trying to do a wet and wet, you have to be super, super, super fast. So, but then it's, it, you don't have to worry because um, watercolor is quite adaptable. You can change things. You can blur out those hard, sharp edges later. So, yeah. So now I'm painting in the greens quickly because I know the paint and the um, paper is starting to really dry up. And I'm using a mixture of um, sap green and light red plus some burnt sienna. And I also added in some ultramarine because I thought it looked too light. So I tried to make it a bit darker. I don't want the greens to be too overpowering. Just like before with the browns, I'm adding a darker layer of um, green with 
more paint and less water. And also for the reds, I'm adding in more paint and、um, just defining some of these areas. So this next color is a very very light shade of green, and I actually used、um, the same green as before, and I added in some compost blue and cobalt green. So it becomes this、um, interesting greenish blue color, and、uh, I like that it's really pale, and、um, yet it's very nice. So you may notice that the paper has completely dried now, because now every time I paint, there are hard edges. So in order to、um, soften that, I use a wet, clean brush、um, using clean water, and I just brush over that hard edge, and it just smoothens it out. So it's it's really fun to do.、Um, Watercolor paintings because it's so adaptable and you can do these really soft paintings, which I I love that aesthetic, and it's not something you can do with, say, gouache or acrylic. So I I do love watercolor because of that. Now I'm adding in more green. To、um, kind of define, especially the bushes on the left side, and you can see that now there are more hard edges、uh, when I paint on a dry surface. So it balances out the left and right sides because、um, the left side had a lot of soft edges, and、uh, the right side has a lot of hard edges. So as you Add in layers to the left side; it will balance that out. So the final color that I will be mixing is actually a mixture of the previous green and、um, a gray color. So you can use a different gray, but the the gray that I used is、um, a mixture of ultramarine plus burnt sienna. So, when I'm painting this window, I'm not actually painting the whole thing that dark green grayish color, but I only painted like the top that color, and then I changed to a different brush and used a little bit of cerulean blue. So that creates a gradient for that window. So now I'm using the same dark green color to paint in the doors, and I'm also varying it up by using that、um, cerulean blue as well. So for this piece, I deliberately painted lighter, and I used lighter paint. Lighter colors because I don't want to overpower those brown ink lines. But if you use a black pen to draw, you can go in with darker paints and add darker shadows. So I was tempted to just use black ink because I am so comfortable with it already. But I did already buy a whole. Bottle of brown ink, so I thought, well, let's just go for it. If it doesn't look great, then I will just do another one. <laughs> And thankfully, I really love how this one turned out. So this piece is almost done. It just needs some of those shadows, and I'm using the same, the same grayish green color. I'm I'm really being super、um, simple with this sketch. 
I'm trying to be fast, but I'm not. Uh, uh, actually, this took around 45 minutes to complete. That's why I had to speed up some of these parts. I aimed to make this uh, a quick sketch. In the end, it did take some time, but it all the steps are really simple. It just takes a little bit more time to complete. Um, and I really enjoy the putting in the shadows part actually because um, that's the part when you really see the painting sort of pop like it comes to life and when I start a painting I really uh, look forward to adding in shadows so sometimes I will add in shadows like at the very beginning even um, like like when I was adding in the bushes I already added in some of those shadows and um, also for like the windows so now we're doing a little bit of the details and just painting in these um, chairs and tables with the brown that we used before so it looks like a different brown um, than the first brown that we used simply because um, at first we used a wet on wet so once the paint dries it will fade quite a lot if you use the wet on wet technique so do keep that in mind and you can see that now I'm using that same brown to paint in some of those bricks on the top wall and I'm not being very accurate I'm just um, adding an impression of bricks so people who see this they will fill in the blanks by themselves and I think that is more interesting to look at and also I'm adding in a darker brown to vary up that wall I do have plans on doing faster sketches in the future. In fact, I might do some plein air sketches and record them if possible. So do let me know down in the comments below if you would like to watch something like that. And if you found this video helpful to you, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. I do read comments even though I can't reply to everyone so thank you thank you very much to everyone who has been so kind and encouraging for me so far so maybe we can do a live sketching session in the future so everyone can sketch and chat together at the same time and I think that will be really fun so Thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.